My guest tonight is an actor who is unarguably one of India's finest. By the sheer force of his talent and his astonishing range, he has endured and triumphed. Today, 15 years later, he's still taking home all the awards. As an actor, I admire him enormously. As a friend, I delight in his company. So join me while I talk to the gifted Anil Kapoor. The world is rushing by so fast. Let's press the pause and make it last. waiting for you. I was, trying, I was remembering when I first met you, and it was many, many years ago. You were just joining films, and you were this skinny young boy, I pink. Still, still scary. <laughs> yes, and I remember very clearly at that time, you had this intensity in your eyes, and I felt you had some, some burning dream inside. Did you? Well, yes, definitely. I'm sure the, the burning desire was to make it as an actor. Single-minded. Single-minded. Absolutely one track, like a horse. Just wanted to go in front of the camera and act. But I wondered at that time whether your obsession was for Sunita, who you were dating, or whether it really was <laughs> to be an actor. I think, uh, in a way, for both. It was for both, both yeah. And you got both. Yeah, I got both. Which was the biggest struggle? I definitely, I had in my mind that 100%, you know, the girl whom I loved so much, I'm going to get married to her, but I wanted to make a, you know, a house for my, of my own, you know, I had to make it, you know, I, you see, um, to be honest with you, I was born in Chembur, uh, it's a small suburb of Bombay, uh, in, in uh, uh, Tilaknagar. I was born there, you know, these are, you have these about 100 buildings over there and there's, uh, uh, you know, there are about uh, 70 to 80 flats in every building. You know, it's one room flat which has, doesn't have a bathroom also, it has a common we have we used to have these common bathrooms, you know, that kind of thing, and you know, but still living in such a uh, you know uh, mm. locality and still living in a very 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 extremely lower middle class poor kind of quarters, but still, my father he gave us everything. To be honest with you, he would suffer himself, but mm. you know he would get you know like uh, my mother and father they would give us the best of clothes, the best of clothes. We used to think we are always to feel that we are millionaires, so, but. Somewhere I wanted to buy the spoon also myself. You know, every part of my house, everything I wanted to do it myself. And I didn't have a house, so I wanted a house for myself before I could take the decision of getting married. You wanted to establish yourself? More than establishing myself, I, was, I never had great ambitions, Simi, of, of money. Okay. Okay, I had great ambitions as an actor, but never uh, materialistic, I never had great ambitions. I still don't have great ambitions, you'll be surprised. Because I believe, uh, very, very honestly, that I feel that you don't have to follow commerce. Mm. The commerce follows you. You know, the money mm. follows you. You just keep on doing your work. In your childhood, there were financial problems. Do you try and forget those days at all? Or do you keep them alive in your mind? I keep them alive when I'm only when I'm working, when I'm acting. Sometimes, yes, you do remember it, but it's okay. That's part of life, and that makes life very exciting and definitely there have been a lot of hardships. Matter of fact, a few years back uh, we faced uh, almost the same situation after two of our films, uh, very ambitious films, Roop Ki Rani, Chono Ka Raja and Prem uh, were major disasters. And we had pumped in everything, all our money into those two films. So we said, that's what uh, Boni and myself had discussed, that Okay, you know, we're getting into such a, you know, we're really gambling, you know, we're really going overboard, we're doing something, we're overstretching ourselves, you know. I said, then we can fight back, yeah. We can fight back, no, no problem, yeah. let's take this risk. Yeah. Really? And that's what we did. He's fucked up everything. 
So everything was mortgaged, everything. And, and, uh, and uh, it's become more exciting that um, things are looking up again. Mm. But normally, you know, when families struggle together, when they go through a hard time, they become very close. And when they get success, a lot of them become independent, go their own ways. It's just natural. Are you guys still as close as you were when you're in your childhood days? It's very strange, but we have a very strange kind of relationship. Especially, you see, Sanjay is younger, definitely. Yeah. Sanjay is very much younger. Uh, Boni and myself have been very, very close. Mm -hmm. Very close. And um, we are not only brothers, but we are friends. He's an elder brother. He sometimes becomes like a father. And um, he's done a lot for our family. So have you. Well, I'm okay. <laughs> he's done a lot. But I still want to ask you, would you say that you're a better brother, a better son, a better husband, or a father? It's a Simi, tough one. It's a very tough one, Simi. I think I'm bad in all form. I feel like my career, my profession is too time-consuming. People might say what, all kinds of things about me, but I feel I can still do more and more and more for my, for my children, for my family, for my friends, for my brother. But this career, this profession, takes your toll. But Tanya, Ani, was it a struggle for you to become an actor, a successful actor? Yeah, it was. It was? Why? Um, you know, I, ne I felt I never looked like a hero. <laughs> people felt I had very small eyes, I had too much hair on my head, you know, a small face, I remember. too kiddish looking. I remember you so told me they used to call you, they used to call you Jughead or something about that. Jughead, used to Jughead and Satsang. They used to call me Satsang and Jughead. So, so that's uh, it. So, but um, so I was there. So I kept on meeting producers. From there was not every day I would meet two producers or three producers. Go to their offices. But you work. say you had dreamt this whole thing out. Yeah, that so I'll I do bit roles, and then I would, uh, you know, become a hero or a leading man or whatever. And that happened like that. Has it turned on. out exactly as you dreamt? Exactly the way I dreamt. As much as this? No, no, but not as much as this. I never dreamt. <laughs> years. People have come and gone in front of us, Anil. What is it that's kept you here? What, what is it that makes you such a fine actor? Thanks. Because I always feel I'm not. <laughs> you can't not feel that. I still feel I'm nowhere. Honestly, I'm not being modest. I mean it. I'm, I'm a very insecure person. Today? Yes. What are your insecurities? Everything. Tell me. Uh, insecurity is that... Uh, I won't be able to, you know, perform in front of the camera. And um, I don't know if I'll be able to take this, you know, you know, perform this role. Will I be able to do this role? I always feel insecure. I, I feel that there are better people who can do better than me <laughs> whenever I take a role or a film. That's why whenever anybody, it's, it's a very saying in the industry, you know, like, uh, they call me to certain like a headmaster or kind of, you know, that he really probes and gets into the film and, and you know, really, and then I really accept the film because I'm always insecure. It's not that I'm taking time. I want to do the film. I'm dying to be in front of the camera, but you know, I get scared. I get scared. Will I be able to do it? Will I be able to, you know, fulfill my director's dream? Because I am basically a director's actor. Do you think there are so many pressures in stardom? There are pressures. Let's face it. Everyone's victory is a public victory. Mm -hmm. A failure is a public defeat. There's a lot at stake for everybody. Do you think the pressures of stardom necessitate a degree of paranoia and narcissism and ego? Yes, it can happen. It can happen. It happened to the best of people. It can happen. I'm sure it must have hit me sometime or the other, these streaks which you're talking about, of being very narcissist and being... Uh, you can't not be. I remember I was working with this very big star and uh, we were all driving this car going on location and suddenly he got some kind of a rash or something here. Maybe it was the cold weather, the snow, whatever. He went into a frenzy. So for him, his appearance is vital. It's so important. For a star, it is important to me, not for an actor. The appearance. You might be the ugliest man with all kinds of scars on your face. But if you can perform, you can deliver, you can do your characterization and 
You can definitely hold the audience. You think of yourself as an actor, not a star? I always thought myself to be an actor first and then a star. Well, you're lucky again you got both, honey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actor and star. You said that the more successful you are, the more people hate you in this industry. Why, why do you feel this, honey? Uh, <laughs> well, I feel, I think, uh, so I, must have, I said this, I remember, I did say this uh, uh, many years back. I'm sure I must be slightly m immature in saying that. Mm. You're not that important that everybody should hate you. But now things have changed. I think everybody likes me. <laughs> they certainly do. <laughs> you have been through failures, successes, ups and downs, victories, everything. Tell me, what has this whole gamut taught you? <laughs> See, I have uh, learned not to take success very seriously and not to take failure also very seriously. Because success and failure are, they're going to happen. You're going to be successful, you, your time is going to come when, uh, when you are not going to look the way you're looking. You're not going to be, you know, there is be so many things which will have a change in your entire life. And you could take it? Yeah, I have to completely have that kind of sensibility and intelligence. It's very tough. It's very, very, very tough, but I have to. So I have to learn. I, that's what I, I have learned. So in that way now, today, when you look in the mirror, as opposed to when you looked 15 years ago, what do you see? I, I, I just pray to God and I thank Him, to be honest with you. I don't, you know, I don't really um, gloat and, uh, you know, get very overexcited about that, you know, everything has gone so well for me. But uh, I keep on thanking God. And I, had a, I have a great family around me. And these are the people who keep you on the ground. Do they treat you like a star at no, all? No, no, no. They treat me very badly. <laughs> very bad. I swear on it. Like I, how? Hmm? What did they do to you? They don't take me seriously. Everybody is pulling my leg all the time. They're making fun of me. And... Uh, say, mujhe patao? Like, what sort of things do they do? Uh, they make fun of me. <laughs> what do they make fun of? Everything. My clothes, the way I act. Um, the way I speak, the way I sit down and I'm having dinner, my children, my children are perpetually making fun of me. They say, Dad, where are you? Why, why, why aren't you concentrating? Where is your mind? You know, listen to me when I'm talking to you. Sometimes I'm in my own world. You're a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. That's why I never drive. What sort of dreams do you have? Good and bad and evil dreams. Nightmares. I still have nightmares. Like what? What kind of nightmares? I, nightmares. You have nightmares of losing your close people, okay. people who are close to you and you have these nightmares and you don't want to, you want to hold on to them. You see the whole world is become so, you know, you know, it's, it's you know, for everybody to understand it's so bad that the only people who are re really matter are your family. So you're clutching on to them, you don't want to lose them, you know, you don't want to lose your family members. You don't want to lose anyone. So that's the nightmare, which uh, is very frightening. Who would you say really knows Anil Kapoor best? My wife. If I were to ask her what you think of Anil Kapoor as a person, what do you think she'd say? <laughs> well, what would she say? She's very, she's a very practical person, to be honest with you. Very practical. Kya bolegi? Kya bolegi? Ah. What, what does she think of you as a guy? What kind of a person are you? Fool. <laughs> she thinks I'm a fool. In what way? In every way. She thinks I'm a fool, a duffer. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, really, I'm telling you. I don't believe. She thinks I'm foolish. <laughs> Honestly. I don't know. I don't know what she thinks. And I, I, I get convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you 
one thing, Annie. I know, you, I feel I know you very well, and yet in many ways I can't really slot you as a person. Are you modern or are you conservative? I'm conservative. You are. Yeah. I think you are too now. Uh, but I'm modern in. Uh, I'm very modern where where the other sex is concerned. Very modern. I believe in equality. I believe totally in equality in a husband, wife, wife and girlfriend. Especially in a husband-wife relationship, I believe in total equality. Totally. And I never ever interfere in what she wants to do, what she wants, what she thinks. And she leads her life. You know, we help each other in all our ways, um, in every way possible. But she is what she is. Which way are you conservative? I totally believe that you should respect your elders. Because... I don't know. I feel if you can't respect your elders, I feel uh, you should not live in this world. Do you take life seriously or are you lighthearted? No, I, 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 sometimes I uh, take it lightly also. But I think if you... Um, in the balance? In the balance, I take it seriously. Are you friendly or reserved? I'm friendly, definitely. I would like to make as many friends. I would like to know people. I would like to meet mm. different people. I'm very curious, you know. If anybody invites me, I'm there in his house or her house. and for a wedding or for a party or for an opening or to someone and my neighbor will invite me for a wedding. I don't know, I've never met him, but I'll just drop in over there. Really? And, and if, I, if I can make them happy, you know, someone happy, I'm there. Are you jealous at all? Yes, of course. I am jealous, yeah. Possessive? Yeah, possessive. I'm jealous, I'm possessive. But I'm practical, but mm. I'm not uh, mm. very, uh, you know, intensely jealous or intensely possessive. Practical. I am. These streaks are there in me, definitely. Well, what would you like to change about yourself? Change my face. What oh, do you mean, man? I find everyone's face better than mine. I wish I was, I had a body like Silver Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger and looks of Tom Cruise. <laughs> but no, Bhagwan has given anything. But he has given a lot. He gave a lot. But you know, sometimes I feel, chalo, thik hai, chalo, I'll work hard and do something about it. Are you superstitious, Anil? Uh, yes. Very? I am, no, 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 not very. But I am superstitious about things. You know, um, I should pray to God. If I don't pray, things might go wrong. Mm. <laughs> and I should be nice to, you know, like um, my family, my children and friends. I should not harm anybody. I'm, you see, you know, I take that as a, you know, if I'm, you know, nice to my friends and everyone, I said things will go right for me. How do you rate yourself as an actor on a scale of one to ten? Uh, three. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, Anil. Why? Three. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it'll become. I will sound. I'll, I'll sound very boring. I mean it honestly because uh, three, four. Okay, how do you rate your appearance? Appearance. Three. Two. Your intelligence. Oh yeah, three, four. <laughs> Gosh, you're on the low end of the scale. <laughs> Your sex appeal. Please, I mean, sex appeal. Sex appeal. Two. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what about your uh, self-confidence? Self-confidence, you can say seven, eight, nine. Okay, we're improving. Who is your favorite cricketer? Swain Gavaskar. Who would you say is the most irresistible woman in the world? Lots, I mean, lots of them. Every yeah. day, every day I meet so many of them, but then I have to hold back. What do I do? Who every day I come across, you know, so many women, and, you know, I'm so attracted towards them, and <laughs> what do I do? Putting me on? <laughs> seriously. But seriously, tell me, who is it who you think you would not be able to resist? And my wife. Okay, wives and mothers and sisters not allowed, huh? No, no. <laughs> she should get into good books, you see. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell her that to you. <laughs> but surely you must look. But look at our beautiful Indian women. How can you just... Oh, they're all them? beautiful. Well, how can you overlook them? All of them. All my actresses I've worked with. All no, of no, them. No, please. No, don't tell me. Seriously, all the actresses I've worked with, they are so beautiful. Agreed. Each one of them is absolutely beautiful. But beautiful. who's most beautiful out of the beautiful lot? Madhubala. You're very diplomatic. No, no, seriously. Naturally, I, she's... I know. would 
you know, do anything, give everything up for her. Seriously. If that question doesn't arise now, you see. So what do I do? I, you know, I, you know, nobody I look, around at this, look at her photographs and There's worship nobody around her photographs. Who's, who's alive and kicking who you... Um, uh, it's scary to say it. Huh? No, 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 seriously. <laughs> oh, God, to me, you can't do this to me. Please? Please. You never thought about these things. I do, but I don't want to give, give you. Know. <laughs> have to. Hmm? Have to. Ashwara Rai? Yes. She's yeah. very beautiful. It's been so wonderful talking to you. I always enjoy it. You must come back again. I would love to come back. Actually, okay. I mean it. And thank you so much for this rendezvous.